man, you go crazy. So it's 1994, and at this point, you've been working for the Chicago police for eight years. Yes. And you've just started to notice that something ain't right. You've been right. seeing things, you've been reporting things, and nothing's happening. Right. So you report, uh, well, you call in some drug dealers mm -hmm. from your friend's uh, apartment. Yeah. And, 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 and you told us okay. things went downhill from there. Yeah, things went da downhill from there. Here's the deal, okay. I called, I called in a um, complaint on her behalf. My squad car sitting in front of her house. I'm in her house, full uniform. This was a working day for me or whatever. I tell the operator to, that um, I needed a tech team or somebody to come over to uh, catch the guys. I gave all their descriptions, where their stash was at and all that kind of stuff. So they said they were sending a unit. So she and I were just looking through the window, you know, like anybody else waiting, you know, we looking through the cracks, waiting to see what was gonna happen. What happened was when the officers responded, it wasn't the type of response that I assumed it would be. They high-fiving these guys, hitting them. It was just totally inappropriate. Hmm. So I recognized who it was. And so I told, I told her name was Miss Curtis. I told Miss Curtis, I said, I got to report this. She, she begged me. She said, please, please, please don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I said, no, you got a right to enjoy your property and enjoy the neighborhood. We tired of this shit. She begged me and I just wouldn't listen. And so I reported it. The day I made that report, my whole police career just took a whole different trajectory. I was... Um, in line to be promoted to be a sergeant, I lost all of that. You reported seeing the other officers, seeing the other officers the drug doing, dealers, yeah. smoking weed with them, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So when you reported that, that's when you became what they call a whistleblower? No, the whistleblower didn't come until I reported it to a higher level. Okay. So let's talk about how I reported it. Okay. What I initially did was went into the station, reported it to my watch commander and to the lieutenant in the tactical unit. They had me to write, um, a, a, you just call it RO, you write reporting officer's report. So I, was, I wrote the reports, I gave it to them or whatever. I had no idea that the people that I reported to was part of that problem because the guys that came out there to respond worked for them. So I'm thinking that you just going to discipline them or whatever. I had no idea that they was going to share that I had made the report and then what would take place over the course of the few, next few months to, that would lead to a shootout on 79th and Western and rush out with traffic with internal affairs. Mm -hmm. That's how, I'm, that was my last day on the police department. Wow, so, uh, wow. So a call from your friend's apartment from yep. seeing some drug dealers led to what they call a Wild West shootout. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so and feel in the middle of all of that. Okay, like after I made that, that report, I noticed that when I, would ret when I returned to work, and I worked by myself. Let me clarify that, too. They call it 99. I was a 99 unit. And most officers aspire to work in the same area. And so for me, being 732 was a real good accomplishment because that means that I can sow my talents and sow my abilities into this one geographic area. I'm not all over. And so that's how I was able to have uh, a lot of information like on the guns and the drugs and stuff because I worked that same beat every day. And that's, that was critical to it because that's how you get your intel is by working it every day. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so the people that I reported it to ultimately in the end were the um, people that were involved in it. And then let me just insert this for a minute. When this stuff was happening to me, I've always been the type of person, I, I believe that you can solve more problems with an ink pen or a typewriter or computer than you can with your fist or whatever. So I'm, I always would document everything. So when this stuff would happen to me, I would document everything and then I would report it, but I would keep my copies and stuff. When I started realizing that people knew that I had made that report, 
my tires on my squad car got slashed. So I would have these strange flat tires all the time. I noticed that when I would call for help, for backup, nobody would come. And I mean, that's serious. And this know? was like immediately it, after the... It was like, I, I won't say immediately, I would say like two or three days. You know, that's when I began to see right. stuff was happening like that. Right. So over the next few, over the next, let's say, 40 days or whatever, it was just continued in that pattern. Things continued down that path where it was a routine where I could call for backup and wasn't getting it. And I figured out that those were the reasons why. So fast forwarding from that point, because that happened in like November, December. So from November all the way to April, I just been under constant little threats and harassment or whatever. But on April 26 of 90 of 94, April 26 of 94, a person flagged down my sergeant and told my sergeant that the uh, drug dealers had put a hit out on me. Okay. And so I just want to Read this you for said a, a second. A, a random person a, a, that lived in the mm -hmm. community. He was a member. He was a gang member. Okay. Yeah. Let me read to, read his report. Yes. And this came from a sergeant Doty, and this is part of my receipts. And I'm not ashamed to say names and none of the, none of that kind of stuff because my shit is real. So can't nobody come after, after me for no slander or anything like that. This is an official police report, and they say who made it. So anyway. This gang member came up to Sergeant Doty. He was my sergeant. And so this was Sergeant Doty's, uh, what he reported. Because he called me on the radio to tell me to come meet him so he could tell me about this shit. I had no idea what he was going to be telling me. So it says, reporting sergeant while in the area of Hamilton Park, remember I talked about Hamilton Park, was approached by a citizen who inquired as to the whereabouts of P.O. P. Wanda. At this time, the citizen uh, went on to relate concern with the safety of this officer as he had related on several earlier occasions information regarding gang drug activity in the area. The citizen went on to say that there was a hit on Wanda and that the people that were going to do this hit knew where she lived. So now we done took this shit from just not helping me to now some motherfucking gave out my home address and, and part of, you know, a hit. Because we learned later on that the officer, it was a police officer that gave out my address. And um, he was at, at the gang meeting while they was trying to organize all of this shit. And he was there. And he was part of the people that I had reported everything to. He was part of that corruption. Mm. Mm. So not only did he give out my address, he gave descriptions of my vehicle and all of that other kind of stuff. And so I'm like, damn. So I go. So my sergeant tell me to go into the station. And so he going to pull me off the streets, you know, today or whatever, because I'm like freaking out. You know, this shit is real. And and um, that same after the officer I'm sorry, after the sergeant called me to meet him where he could tell me what was going on, it was at the, it was on 71st Street at William Hinton School. We was in that parking lot. And so um, this person that reported it to him walked up at the same time while I was talking to Sergeant Doty. And so then he said what he told Sergeant Doty, he said it right there in front of me. And then he gave more information. He was like, you was over there on P Street. He said they was in the station wagon getting ready to cap your ass, but you was getting ready, you was talking to a senior citizen and they ain't want that kind of smoke with this. Mm. And, and, and I ain't gonna lie, that shit scared yeah, me. Yeah. You know, it, it scared me. How so, old are you at this time? Um, in my, I'm, I'm no more than 26, 27. A young lady. Like this young lady. And my condolences to her family, you know, that's why I say her story remind me, her name was Ariana, Ariana, Ariana Preston. Preston. Yeah, her, her story just remind me so much of my story. I mean, I was criminal justice degree, 
going to law school, all of that kind of stuff. And then I had I had properties, businesses. I modeled. I was a bodybuilder. I mean, I had a lot going on in my life and everything, just like she did to be cut down like that. But this that could have happened to me. And it's just the grace of God that mm -hmm. it didn't. But anyway, so yeah, so um, the guy starts saying that they was going to cap you when you was on P Street. They was in that station wagon. And I saw the station wagon and he, he was referring to. And I'm like, damn, this is some real shit, you know. And so I went to the station and I called my husband. I was married at that time to Jeffrey Wilson. And I called him and told him what was going on and everything, that I'd be coming home shortly or whatever. Now, I'm from the streets. My husband at that time was from the streets. He um, had his own businesses and all that kind of stuff. And the only thing that he should have done different in his life was gotten a criminal expungement. He stole a radio and some car parts when he was young and never got that wiped off his record. And so, as we go forward in this story, when he came to help me, because he hadn't done his due diligence to you know, get his stuff together, they used that to their advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, so my husband was expecting me or whatever. And he, he was um, very familiar with the GDs and the BDs and all of that kind of stuff. So he went and did some digging and found out more about who was involved in all of this stuff. So, cause he wanted me to know. And so um, he gave, I found out who it was, who had given the information to the drug, to um, the drug dealers and stuff like that. And I made a police report. Yeah, I made an incident report and that's this right here. Okay. And it was in, and I reported that, um, on April 8th, I called the police and told them that it was some suspicious vehicles uh, circling my house. And those was vehicles that I would see every day when I was doing my uh, foot patrol or walking or whatever. So I knew these vehicles wasn't from it. They weren't in my neighborhood. You know, they weren't people from my neighborhood. They was from where I worked in Inglewood. Mm -hmm. And so I called the police because remember, I'm a document queen. I'm a document the shit. I documented it. This was the official report that the officers that came uh, gave me. Now, they were reluctant in the beginning to give me this report, but I insisted. And they didn't know really what was going on or whatever, but they were just like, you know, what's the big deal or whatever. But no, this is my life you're talking about. So anyway, I got that that document uh, saying that these vehicles from my beat were uh, circling my house. And so I made after after that happened, the next day I'm coming to work. My expectation is if a person, if a citizen that came and told a sergeant that one of his officers has a hit, where she going, where she or he going to work the following day? Would, would you think that they're going to put you right back out there? Mm -mm. That's what they did. They threw my ass right back out there in the trenches. They ain't had no love, no mercy, none of that shit for me. Mm -hmm. I'm out here every day breaking my ass, walking them fucking blocks and everything trying to do the right thing and then they sit up there knowing these motherfuckers talking about they gonna cap me and they put me right back out there on 732 right back out there on p street by my fucking self that shit pissed me off you know that's, that's just terrible so i began to complain every day they had me out there every day they had me out there now they got these these white bitches that just get out the academy and everything, they let them work inside the station be behind the comfort of the police desk. But they got my black ass out here on the streets hoofing it, and they know these motherfuckers gunning for me. I just, I couldn't accept it. So I made my report to, to the news media. I reported to the FBI. I reported it to um, the police union. I had all of this documentation because I'm like, this is wrong. Y'all not supposed to be doing that. I reported it up the chain of command. They were supposed to take me off the street. They weren't supposed to leave me out there. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, they left me out there, got me working and everything. 
Somebody calling the station every day asking where, I'm, where I am, um, uh, is she coming in and all this kind of stuff. And they're giving out the information, just people calling, looking for me. How, how would you feel? Wouldn't you be like, what you know, fuck? this shit going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, so, and nobody helping me or anything like that. And so um, it went on like that, went on like that. Including nobody responding to my calls. So my husband at the time, Jeff, Jeffrey Wilson, he um, on his uh, time off from work because he worked for the railroad, he would come and back me up. Now, when have you ever heard some bullshit like that? Mm. The, the police officer husband got to come and back up. And so um, he would just come and watch my back. Right. So he would come and watch my back. And then I began to just kind of like try to slow down, you know, not doing so much work or whatever. But it was weighing heavy on me every day. I didn't know if that was going to be my last day. And, and they purposely, you know, like, fuck her. She don't matter. Her life ain't shit. And, and the people that participated in it was the people that I went to college with, them old grimy ass, weak ass, fake ass niggas. You don't, you, when you're a police officer, you don't really know the motherfuckers you're working with until you get into the trenches and need some help. Cause them same motherfuckers that knew me all that time from college didn't open a fucking mouth to say nothing to help me. Plus they weren't even coming out there to back my fucking calls up. So I don't have no love. This some shit I've been wanting to get off my chest since 1995. I'm almost 60. I don't give a fuck no more. I don't care about hurting people's feelings and all of that shit. I don't care about that. And let's take a quick break on something. The motherfucker that report that that put the hit out on me, he also went to internal affairs and said that I was a drug dealer because I was married to Jeffrey Wilson. Jeffrey Wilson. Cause they got him documented in the new type as, as a gangster disciple. Yeah, as a gangster disciple. But I I don't really know what his ties were, but all I know is he was connected enough to find out what I needed to mm -hmm. know, who was involved in it and everything. He tried to see if he could get it squashed, but it came from the police department. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It didn't come straight from them or whatever. So anyway, um, this guy that did this, Okay, do you all remember a few years ago, it was a police officer, he was a warrant officer, and a woman came up into the police station to make a police report and he molested her in the station? I'm not familiar with the story. Here, it, it happened here okay. in Chicago. A Chicago police officer was a warrant officer. His name was Michael Clifton. He turned out to be a serial rapist, accused of being a serial rapist. Oh, you, you know the story I'm talking about? That story is connected to my story because that's the motherfucker that put the hit out mm. on me. We used to date. He didn't like Jeff, and that's how the shit started or whatever. But anyway, he is the one that did that. Now, all these women got raped. Did you notice how they just... This a black man we talking about? Yeah. Okay. They just swept that shit under the rug. He, he didn't go to jail or nothing like that. He was accused of attacking women, choking them out, raping them, and all this kind of stuff. I had made a police report against him for doing that to me. They just wiped my shit under the rug like it never happened. Anyway, if they had got rid of his ass when I reported that he was the one that did all of this stuff, then women wouldn't have been raped. So they left his ass on the police department 20 some years, and he turned out to be a serial rapist. That's some fucked up shit. Mm -hmm. That's some fucked up shit. And I got the receipt. So they can't come and tell, tell me that I'm slandering nobody name or anything like that. I got a, a thing right here. On June 15th, 1995, uh, I made a report that police officer Michael Clifton assigned to the 7th District is harassing police officer Wanda Wilson. And at that and that that officer is associating with a known drug dealer named JB. I made the report, told them. So people be trying to come at me like uh, my shit is fake and all that kind of stuff. I don't give a fuck because they ruined my reputation in the media, in the community and all that stuff. Calling me a drug dealer, uh, doing whatever they could to try to discredit me. 
And so I don't care anymore. My stuff is documented. All I'm doing is reading from an official police report. You tell me if that's slander. So I, I'm worried about all of that. But let me continue with the story because after this guy did what he had to do and my husband watching me and helping me and all that kind of stuff, one Sunday I pull up and I witness a drug transaction and it was in a van. It was involving a van. So I pulled it over because I'm still trying to work. I pull it over. I pull these three guys out. Now I got four guns on. It's, it's uh, cold outside, but I got my 357 on now. So anyway, I'm calling in the police radio for some backup. It's a Sunday morning, so you know ain't nobody busy. Mm -hmm. Nobody come. It's like 15, 20 minutes. I hear police in other districts. Ain't somebody gonna answer that 10-1 call from that lady? I, it's me against three. I got three dudes on a van, my gun on them. I ain't been able to search them or nothing, so I don't know what the fuck going on. And on top of all of that, it's a hit out on me. You get what I'm saying? So I don't know what the fuck is going on. After nobody came and, and, uh, and um, I could hear other officers wanting to respond, I, I just knew something was, they, they trying to kill me. This, this shit, you know, getting real serious. So anyway, I told them motherfuckers to get back in that van. I backed them up. I told them back away, get in that fucking van and leave. And then I backed up and got in my squad car. I cried so hard because that just was like the culmination of all of this corruption. And all I was trying to do was the right thing. Mm -hmm. All I was trying to do was my job. Mm -hmm. All I was trying to do was give back to the community. And this is the fucking payback that I get. And then like that morning that I pulled those three guys over, I'm in the roll call room. The people that's working squad cars like me, motherfuckers that I've been friends with for years, went to college with. I'm like, how the fuck you gonna let a fucking job sell you out from doing what's right. Them motherfuckers that I thought was my friends, they left my ass out there to get capped. So I don't have no love, no mercy on none of them. Chicago is like it is all fucked up like it is because when we was all out there supposed to be working, they wasn't doing their fucking job. Mm. I mean, that's the reality of it. Mm. You can't just have a handful of people doing a little bit here and a little bit there. We all was hired to, to work. And for them to just leave me high and dry like that, and I ain't hear from them, they ain't come to my police board thing, they weren't character witnesses or none of that shit. They just left me like that. And that just make you want to look at people that you calling your friends and associates. Mm -hmm. And especially um, when you in law enforcement, you don't know how the motherfuckers going to uh, turn on you. Somebody told me that they told them to shut the fuck up, don't get involved in this if they didn't want to lose their jobs. I'm like, whatever, whatever. That's all I can so, say. So this, this, was, this was the ultimate black ball. This was the ultimate black ball, which is leading up now to the climax. Mm -hmm. Hey, you go crazy!